Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Canary Islands, where else? Lanzarote, Porto de Azola in the north, to be specific. So today, I'm taking you on a voyage as seafarers are going on a ferry over to La Graciosa. La Graciosa is the smallest of the Canary Islands, the eighth Canary Island, as it's more colloquially known, and only recently got island status. Up until then, it was very much seen as a bit of an offshoot to Lanzarote. It's only a short ferry crossing, I think about half an hour. My plans to visit here have been scuppered twice now because of the last few years and various bits and pieces, but today I've got my ticket and I'm heading over there. As far as I understand it, there are no roads on the island. You certainly can't hire a car. You can get about either by foot or by some Land Rover taxis, is my understanding. I think there's a shop. I think there are a couple of restaurants. And there are certainly no chain hotels over there. It's basically Airbnb type places, which is where I'm staying tonight. And I'll show you that, obviously, when we get there. So, let's go. I'd also like to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Neil's Cars and Aviation. For those who know Neil will know he's nothing if not a petrol head, which brings me to this luxury barge, a stunning E-Class Mercedes, which could be yours for just a fiver. That's right, Neil is raffling off this luxury cruiser, so to enter, all you need to do is follow the link in the description below, which will also give you more details about the car and you could be collecting this car and meeting Neil himself. The raffle ends on the 30th of September at 6pm, or when tickets run out. So don't hang around, and best of luck. So, just on the ship now, I chose Linnaeus Romeos. To be honest, out of the two companies, I couldn't see any discernible difference. The pricing seems to be the same, the timetables are very similar, so I just went with this one. It's only a small ship, and I'll show you around in a moment, um, but I think during the summer, it, probably gets really busy today at the moment uh, we're about 15 minutes before departure or anchors away and at the moment there's just me on it oh there's one other passenger there but I think bear in mind it's still only mid-march so uh, that could explain it I've certainly got lots of seating but it's fairly basic seating uh, like I say it's only a 30 minute journey I did get my jacket out just in case it's a bit windy but we'll see as we What's the phrase? What's the nautical phrase? I'm not sure. Head out to sea? Don't know. So I booked with LinnaeusRomeus.com just on their website. It's very easy to do and what they do is they give you a barcode. So you don't need to pick up any tickets at the office. You just literally come and park in the fishing port town of Ozola in the north of Lanzarote. And what's even better is, whilst you're over on La Graciosa, the company gives you free parking in town. So you don't even need to worry about parking your car process is dead simple all you do is go up to the ticket office which is very easy to find and then go and speak to the person at the counter and what they'll do is they'll put you in touch with one of their colleagues who's usually just sitting on a bench across the road and they just guide you up the street to where their local car park is it seems quite secure to me I mean it seems like quite a nice little resort to be honest I've never been here before so it's very easy you park your car they scan your barcode as you're getting on board the ship and that's it and here I am it couldn't be simpler in terms of pricing, if you're a Canarian resident, you'll get the usual state-sponsored 50% discount. Otherwise, if like me, you're from anywhere other than the Canaries or Spain, I guess, then your total amount is 28 euros, so 14 euro each way. And again, I couldn't see any discount through booking in advance. It's just easier. And I suppose in the peak of summer, it would give you some degree of guarantee that you're gonna get a seat on board. But at the moment, like I say, there's just two of us here at the moment got about 10 minutes before we uh, anchors away, anchors up. You can tell I'm not a very salty sea dog, can't you? And away we go, bang on time. 30 minutes coming up, cruising on the high seas. That's the phrase I was looking for earlier. Cruising on the high seas. It's no p &O cruise to be fair. As you can probably see, we are bouncing around quite a lot and we are literally two minutes out of port and I've got half an hour of this to put up with. So, uh, not the faint-hearted, I'm guessing. But I'll let you know when I'm green and get off on the other side. Uh, so the uh, ship's just slowed down a bit now as we came past the 
point there and actually it's got a lot smoother uh, which is fine I thought I'd be sort of feeling a bit queasy with it but I'm not actually I kind of maybe I do have more sea legs than I thought I'm desperately trying to think of the nautical terms for these things but it is so rare I get on board a ship of any kind I'm, uh, a little bit rusty with the old nautical terms well, I, wanted, I wanted to show you this so to the left of us is the island of Lanzarote to the right La Graciosa I'll show you that island obviously in a lot more detail later in this video but look at this the sweeping mountains this is just another reason why I love the Canary Islands so much it's just so picturesque and there's a bit of a haze in the air it's slightly overcast but this is when it's at its best I love it in March and April because it's just not too hot it's warm it's very warm don't get me wrong and uh, let's face it you know, given my complexion I'd burn in January in Iceland but it is very warm here it's not but it's not too warm for me I've been here in like, July August and you literally just bake and like I say I don't go a golden brown like probably you all do I go red lobster red so I can't stay out in the sun too long and I'm not really a sun worshipper if I'm being honest but I do worship heat I love stepping off the plane at any time of the year down here in the Canaries and that heat just hits you just awesome just love it really looking forward to seeing the Graciosa at last well I can see other people on the island which is a good thing just coming into port now as you can see so far it looks nice actually from where I'm sitting here the apartments look very nice as I said at the start there are no chain hotels here there weren't any really there weren't any real hotels full stop it is simply individual apartments that are owned privately and rented out through the likes of booking.com and I'll tell you a bit more about my apartment how much I paid for it when I find it As the sun sets over Graciosa Island, I find somewhere to go and have a few drinks and dinner. And, well, alcohol was involved. Well, morning folks. So, got a bit sidetracked last night, got chatting to a couple of Germans in the bar, so we had a few too many drinks. A bit of a sore head this morning, I don't mind admitting. That said, it was a fun evening here on La Graciosa. So I promised you a tour of my Airbnb type place. It's not really an Airbnb, I booked it through booking.com for just 69 euro and I thought it was really good value for money so I'll show you around. So this place is called La Casita di Marzia and the owner is very very helpful and she sent me the code to get in very quickly when I arrived on the island last night so as I say about 70 euro for the night and it's about about a mile from the shipping port so not too far to walk. So once you enter You've got this rather gloriously large sitting area, come kitchen, and this really, really impressive, massively large TV. Look at the size of that. That's amazing. So no, that's what she said jokes. <laughs> and then everything is off to the right of this long corridor. So you've got the bathroom there, very clean, very modern. Then you've got bedroom two, which as you can see is a fairly straightforward twin. Beautifully presented. Really well kitted out. And then a window to the inner courtyard, which I'll show you right now. So let's pop through here. Let's go and have a look and feel the lovely temperatures here in La Graciosa. So as I say, you've got the inner courtyard here if you fancy having a an evening away from the restaurants and just cook yourself something in that kitchen and then you've got the spiral staircase up to the roof uh, but that's sealed off so I presume the owner doesn't want people going up there it's that old health and safety thing isn't it that spreads from Britain <laughs> and then we go further down here there's a locked storage cupboard just to the right so I can't show you that and then the main bedroom which is where as you can see I slept last night very comfortable and again very well appointed lots of storage space if you're staying here for a few days and then again another huge television so really well fitted out 
I really enjoyed it. I had a great night's sleep here. It's on the edge of town, and when I say it's sort of a mile to get here, a mile out of the port is the edge of town. This is not a big island, as you'll see as we go on our walking tour shortly. But really nice, really great owner, very on point, nothing was too much trouble. I asked a few questions about the place just before I arrived, and she came back to me very, very quickly. And now we face this uh, rather beautiful day here on the island of what I hope will be a very nice La Graciosa. So, got my four mile walk all programmed in, which should take us out to see some mountains and the view over to another island that's uninhabited. Uh, nothing there at all other than birds. So uh, hopefully we'll get to see that as well. It's a fairly clear morning, so, so far, so good. And I'll show you as we go. With a population of just 730 people, shopping and healthcare are limited here, as is nightlife. Bars do open late, but there are no nightclubs. So if 24-7 dancing is your thing, this probably isn't the island for you. As you can see, most of the island is simply sand. Outside of the main village, Cayeta de Cibo, those with mobility issues may find it uncomfortable. So again, bear this in mind. Graciosa Island does have one or two hotels, and probably the best one for harbour views is the Avita Beach. Do bear in mind though, that Euro for Euro, these hotels are not the same value as in Lanzarote, and can cost upwards of €250 Euro a night in peak season. So this is our first little stop and this rather random, oh I don't know what it is, sort of, is it a fire pit of some sort? At this point I'd just like to say a huge thanks to all of my great Patreon supporters. It's people like Joe, Joshua, Kieran and James who enable me to bring these videos to you month in, month out. A huge thanks to all of you. So give you a reference point. So over there is the point where the ferry comes around from Lanzarote. And you might just be able to see it. There's one just going out now. I don't know if the camera will pick it up in the haze, but uh, they run very frequently every half an hour to 60 minutes during the day. And uh, as I said at the start, it's, uh, it's 14 euro, it's not too bad each way, albeit a little choppy. <laughs> uh, so uh, it looks quite busy up on the mountain this morning. There's a few people up there just meandering up. That's where I'm going. Uh, so this is pretty much the uh, top of the mountain. I've just been to the very peak there and uh, yeah running out of time unfortunately so I'm gonna have to head back down the mountainside. But uh, from here really great views. So altitude wise we're only at about 500 feet above sea level and you can tell that just by Looking at the water there, we're really not that high, but it's quite a steep climb, so that's what makes the difference, I guess. Had a good old walk this morning, a couple of hours out, so I'm going to go ahead, find my breakfast, and then get packed up, head back over to Lanzarote, and uh, staying tonight in uh, Puerto del Carmen, the original resort in Lanzarote, of course, all those many years ago. And if uh, you may have seen the, I was going to say if you're in the UK, but I think it's abroad as well. I think it's in on, on uh, it's aired on a lot of channels. Is uh, recently the story about the Brinks Matt gold bullion heist at Heathrow in 1983, I think. And um, one of the interesting things there is there was a guy who was part of it in terms of how they then laundered the gold smelted it down, laundered it, and it, they used the proceeds, they say, 
to build a lot of what is now in Canary Wharf. So chances are if you live in Canary Wharf uh, in London, some of your house or all of your house in fact would have been built with the proceeds of crime. But the reason I'm mentioning it is because there was a notorious con man, John Goldfinger Palmer. And they called him Goldfinger because literally everything he touched turned to gold. And um, he built a huge timeshare con empire here in the Canary Islands, in Tenerife in fact, in the late 80s. And became so rich from it that he made the Times 100 rich list one year. And uh, it was all one big con. And he was about to turn supergrass, they say. And uh, so there he was, John Palmer, Goldfinger, doing his gardening in his luxury mansion. Relatively recently, it's happened within the last five or ten years, and uh, he was uh, assassinated by a hitman. So just heading back to Caleta de Cibo, the, I want to say capital city, it's not even a town or a, it's a village, I suppose. And unfortunately, I didn't get the drone up. As you can probably hear on the voice here, it's incredibly windy today. It was always a risk. Generally, it's always a risk bringing a drone to the Canary Islands because more often than not, it is just too windy. They, you know, given where you are, the islands don't have much protection from the wind or the elements. That said, I will try and bring you some drone footage when I get back over to Lanzarote, which is literally over there, 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 wherever my finger is. It's that big rock that you can see in front of you. Uh, so I just found a restaurant on the beach. Restaurant El Verte, which is very nice. And having tuna croquettes for breakfast. Just waiting for the ferry back across to Lanzarote. Just about to get on the ferry back over to Lanzarote now. Very quick one might stay here just to get a feel for the place. And it's definitely somewhere I'd come back to, definitely somewhere I want to explore more across the other side of the island. Hopefully get the drone up at some point. That's a real pity. I was really looking forward to doing the drone across to the uninhabited island. But maybe next time. But as you can see, the whole place has suddenly come alive. It's about lunchtime now. Uh, I just had my breakfast rather late, but there you go. And Got to say, really great, La Graciosa is definitely somewhere you should see. Even if you just come from a day trip, a lot of people do come just for the day. Have a wander around, grab some lunch and then head back over to Lanzarote in the evening. But if you can, do stay overnight, because like everywhere, it has a different feel on a night. And the bars here, whilst there aren't many of them, there is a real atmosphere here and the bars open. And I had a few pints with a German chap who I met last night. We were talking about various things. Hence why I've got a slight headache this morning. Not because I was talking to a German man, because we had too much, too much to drink. But um, yeah, overall, lots to do here. Uh, if you had a few days, I don't unfortunately this time, but I will in future. You can hire a bike, you can hire a cart, you can go on safari tours in the Land Rovers, and it's all good. I highly recommend coming and seeing it. I'd go so far as to say, if you're going to come to Lanzarote for sort of a two or three week holiday, it would be a shame if you missed it. A real shame. Anyway, gonna head back onto the ferry now, head back over to Lanzarote. Thanks again for watching, really appreciate it. Huge welcome again to all of the new Patreon supporters. We've had a few of the last few months. You're all very welcome. Thanks for your support. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. You all know that I love the Canary Islands, so it'll come as no surprise that in an upcoming video I explore another of the smaller Canary Islands, El Hierro. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.